rolling, goes the drum, beating behind the MC, known as that we I started rapping, man, somewhere around 1991, man, right around this neighborhood, a couple of blocks over on a block called Caress. Uh, that's in my neighborhood, in the neighborhood Compton Crip Gang hood down here, where um, a few of my homies, man, my close homies, they was getting into the music industry, you know, they was hanging around Dr. Dre and Easy, and Ren and the whole NWA crew, because Easy used to stay a couple of streets over two on Muriel Block, the next street over from Caress, where I actually started rapping. So we used to hang out, you know, at Easy Backyard, you know what I mean? Easy, when Dre and them used to DJ in his garage. And, you know, I had an interest in rap, but I was a gangbanger. So being a gangbanger, you know, in rap, back then in the, you know, 89, 90, you know, it was kind of like just now becoming a cool thing. So, you know, a lot of my cats kept gangbanging, you know, but I decided to give the raps, the rap thing a try, you know what I mean? And my homies encouraged me. You know, Notorious Joe, Sin Loke, you know what I mean, Larry Moe, uh, my boy Cubone, all of the cats that was around back then, Big A Love, shout out to Underworld Connection, that's still my clique, you know what I mean, we all grown with kids and doing our thing now, but the Underworld Connection got me started, my boy Notorious Joe, Blue Rag, actually gave me my name, at will, you know what I mean, we sitting around, he just... Like, man, you know, we just be doing everything, Will, you know what I mean? Why don't we just, man, we just go call you at Will, you just do everything. So, you know, from then on, you know, it was history. And, um, from that point, you know, we started running with Easy and Dre and, you know, the whole NWA clique, you know what I mean? Staying at their shows, you know what I mean? Start doing our own shows, start doing, back then they had a, um, a lowrider um, shop called Orly's. They used to have these car shows every year. we perform at the car shows. You know, those were like big venues back then. You know, kind of like what the dub show is now. And um, got started doing that, man, and started writing a lot of solo stuff. You know, I was with the group thing, but, excuse me. I started writing a lot of solo music, so, you know, I was kind of, I kind of started the writing thing, and I kind of got into it quick. Me and my pen was friends. You know, so I mean, it could tell all of the things that you know I've been going through through the streets and with the gang banging, with the females, with whatever I wanted to pour out onto that paper. You know what I mean? It allowed me to do. So I started writing, and I, and, you know, I just could write extremely well from get go. You, you know what I mean? I had a song called "Where There's a Will, There's a Way," and um, that was my very first song I wrote, y'all. A song called "Where There's a Will, There's a Way," and. Um, I went and did a song called Party Zone, which everybody knows me for, that, that knows me from the beginning of my career that's of age like me. You know, I had a song called Party Zone, which I used to rock shows from here to Hollywood, all up and down Sunset Boulevard, from the Palladium to the Roxy, to the Whiskey of Go-Go's, to the Carlos and Charlie's, to the every spot that you can name, where they were throwing showcases back in the 90s. You know, I used to go and take first place in them near every show I did. You know, and that's when I really knew I had a stage presence. And it wasn't that I was leaving my group either, because I was still hanging with my group, but I just was producing music or bringing music about a little bit quicker. So it ended up starting to be a solo career after a minute because I was just a little bit more out there and doing my thing. They were still doing that thing too, but I started running, writing more solo songs and actually getting them produced. I got with a studio called TKO Studios, which would happen to be one of the members of the groups family members, you know, got my first couple tracks from my producer Rob, man, I miss you Rob, homie, at least some more that heat, man, TKO was the first cast that gave me a shot, you know, they was a studio on West Side, Pyro in Compton, you know what I mean, they was from the other side too, you know what I mean, you know I'm a crip, you know, they was Pyro's, you know what I mean, but it didn't matter, we was all, we all came together for a common goal, you know, which was to make money in this music industry and, you know, put all our street stuff aside so that we could see our families eat. You know, so I started doing music with them. I came with the Party Zone, man. I had another song called Nose Trouble, which I'm finna rewrite for y'all about nosy ass bitches. And um, Lock Up, man. I had so many songs back then. It was just, could have been hits today. But, you know, when you first start out doing music, you don't know all the elements. You just do the music and you can develop a love for the creation of the work. You know, so 
to make a long story short, I kept doing what I was doing, doing showcases and making more songs and my name started spreading, you know, so I had investors start stepping up, getting interested, you know, managers and investors. I took on a temporary manager, one, one young lady named Stephanie. She was a real cool lady, you know what I mean? She worked out of Hollywood, I forget her last name, but she did teach me a lot and I wanna, I'm thankful for her, you know what I mean? She helped me out a lot. In the process of dealing with her, you know, she filmed my first video on Venice Beach, you know what I mean, which never really got put out. It was just a, a video just to promote my music. And, uh, we ended up um, catching an investor, you know. The investor came in and uh, we sat down, we talked about a deal. At that point, um, I wasn't in contract with Stephanie, so you know, it was really like, she was doing cool stuff, but I was ready to take it to the next level and she really couldn't get me there at the time, you know what I mean? She was like a beginning stage, you know, manager, you know. You gotta always remember, if I tell you anything that's important, that this is a business. You know, it's a business first. It's not about friends, it's not about, you know, you can make it all of that and you'll be sitting at home broke eating top ramen with the rest of the cats, you know what I mean? So you gotta push the friend stuff aside or even the love stuff aside that you might have for people sometime to make the best career moves for yourself. So I had to make a career move at that point. I took on the investor and sat down and discussed a deal with him and ended up doing a deal with the investor, which was a step up for my career because now I get to work on the album. I got somebody to put some money behind me and work on the album. So a lot of stuff was going on at the time too. It's not just from the taking a step forward with the um, next point in my career that made me stop utilizing the management situation. I, you know, I found out a few things that she was hiding from me and a few bad things that was going on behind the scenes, you know. So with that, once I took on the investor, man, it was on from there. We started making more music. I had songs, I had thousands of songs already written. So it was like, all we had to do was get in the studio. At that time, I turned around and linked up with my boy Battle Cat, BC Powder, up out of 60 Crip, LA, you know what I mean? That's my nizzle, man. One love, Battle BC Powder, baby. <laughs>